So you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our January Live with Laura. So this session is recorded. We are going to be putting it on our LMS so you guys can review it at any time that uh, that you need to. You can reach out to us at any time at training at isnoah.com, and we can assist you guys. You can register for any of our sessions also at asnoah.com, our website, and go to Asno University. And you guys can register for any of our sessions along with our next Live with Laura that will be in February. All right, so thanks again for joining. We will get started here. And we are going to review everything that is epic today from start to finish. We want to keep this interactive. It's going to be a refresher for a lot of you. And then it may be some new helpful tips that you guys will get along the way. So please reach out, chat it in, raise your hand, whatever you guys need. Let's please keep it interactive because we can all learn from one another. So if I'm going to show you guys something in Epic and you do it a little differently, hey, reach out. Let's uh, talk about it. And maybe your way is a little better. So we're always looking for suggestions. You guys are all working in Epic. So uh, we would love to hear from you. So these are our objectives today. We are going to be providing details on adding accounts, adding policies. We want you guys to be utilizing attachments, dragging and dropping in your attachments, your deck pages, quote sheets, auto ID cards, you know, anything that pertains to that client. We want you guys to drag and drop it in attachments so you always have it. Working with activities helping protect your e insurance. So um, we're gonna show you that as well. Along with download, woo, everybody loves downloads. Everybody always has questions on downloads. So we wanna give you guys um, a little helpful tips and tricks on that and show you guys a new feature in Epic that we made available to everybody um, called the recall feature. And then um, if we have time, just wanna review some of the reports a lot of people have questions on them. So we, um, if we have time, we're going to go through that as well. But first, we want to show you guys what's new in our education department. Or not what's new, but what we have that we really want you guys to be utilizing every month. And that is our breakfast brew. I am going to pull this up. If you give me a minute. Because I want you guys to see this. And let me know, are you getting a copy of the breakfast brew? Raise your hand, chat it in. If you are not getting this, you should be getting it and reviewing it. Look into your junk in your spam folders, making sure that you guys are getting this once a month. Yes, Kate, it's only once a month. And we are giving you guys all the information that you're going to need in regards to Epic any webinars. Um, Lisa, check your junk in your spam folder for that. We're going to give you guys some pro tips. So this came out on January 3rd, and it gave you a video. Catherine did this great video on this recall feature. And this is how you're going to go in and request another download instead of reaching out to the carrier. What? Yes, that is available and also some information on this uh, personal URL that's in Easy Links. We want you guys to have all of this information. Uh, prior to that, we had in the brew that if you're writing with American Reliable, they were purchased by Aegis, and when they are renewing those policies, they are renewing them with a new policy number, which means when commissions are paid, they're gonna go to the Outstanding Commissions Report because we don't know who to pay because of that policy number is different. So please take a look at it. Uh, make sure that you are getting it. And we also have some new features in that. Um, is Angel on with us yet? No, she is not. But in the brew this next month, we are going to have some neat new feature in here. And that is going to be. Um, a secret word. So on here, you're going to scroll through, you're going to click on it, see what the secret word is. And then in February's Live with Laura, we're going to ask you 
what that secret word is. And then what we're going to do is do a raffle for some really cool secret swag that we're going to send out to you. Also, we're going to have a uh, brew bucks. So when you're going in here and you're opening it and you're reading everything, we can see that. We know who's opening it. We know who's clicking around, looking at um, the different things that we have to offer. So we are going to put you guys in a raffle for some coffee, some brew bucks. So we would send you out a gift card. So we got a lot of great things going on. And we're doing this and doing these uh, secret swags and the brew bucks because this newsletter is so important. So some of you are saying that you did and aren't receiving it. Others, please check your junk and your spam right now. Go right into it. And look, January 3rd, it was sent out. So January 3rd, check January 3rd. Make sure that you guys are receiving that because we got a lot of information. This, um, this one coming out in February is going to have some information on Easy Links and Progressive. So we're going to put that in there as well. So thank you for those of you that are going in and reading it because there is so much information that we want you guys to have. Important information. All right. Our learning management system. I know I talk about it, you know, every time, but it's so important. And we're giving you guys so much information on trainings, webinars, vendors. So if you don't have that, you can go to um, asnoa.com. Click on the Asnoa University landing page and you will see our learning management system. Take a look at it. We did a whole live with Laura on it and that recording is on there. If you have any questions, you can go in and uh, register right there for it. It is $25 a month. It's charged to your Asnoa account and you will not be disappointed in it. We have a lot of agents that are on it, using it and loving it. You can always go back into it and search Hey, how do I enter a policy? What's the outstanding commissions report? What am I supposed to do when I see that there is a policy on the outstanding commission? We have that all in our LMS for you guys. What we're doing today, we are going back to basics. We are going to look into Epic and go through adding accounts, policies. We're going to go in there and please let's keep this interactive so then you guys can share your ideas and your thoughts on that. I'm going to shut my camera off because I'm going to get a little fuzzy here once I start getting into Epic. All right, here we go. Give me one minute to pull this up. All right, can you see, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am using the Epic browser. So for anybody that is new, you guys are already using the Epic browser. Anybody that has been with us for, you know, over a year or more, 10 years, you guys are all using the install version of Epic. So if you see down at my screen, I have that little icon. But this is the browser base. So you can use it with your Mac computers. If you are using the install version and you're having an issue, log into the browser because I bet you, you won't have an issue. After 2024, Applied Systems is no longer going to be having the install version. So we are really hoping that everybody is going to start using the browser, get acclimated with it, because there are some things that are a little different in there. And that is especially when you're going in and adding a new account. So I'll show you guys what that looks like right now. So the one thing that I always suggest is before you add a new account, always search for this account. And if I'm looking, I'm like, okay, I don't see that I have, um, let's just put in, I think I have Alex, we'll put in Alex Redbutt. So when I click the plus sign, my screen is a little different than what it was when you guys are using the install version. And here it comes. See, it looks a little different, but it's still all of the same information when you are adding in from the install or from the browser version. You're gonna put in it if it's an individual or if it's a business. One thing that I've noticed with working with agents is that they are taking 
and putting in an individual account. So if it is um, Ginger Redbud, only put in the personal information and all the personal policies for that client. Don't put in and mix in the business. Come in and create a new business account for Ginger Redbud, Redbud's business, Redbud Nursery and Flowers. Whatever the name of it is, create two separate ones. This way, when you are running reports, you're going to find, I have this many personal lines accounts, I have this many commercial lines accounts. Or if you're running a report because you want to cross sell any of your commercial accounts that only have a bot policy and you wanted to contact them about work comp or a commercial umbrella, we can do that with reporting. But as long as you have the two of them that are separated, and especially when we um, have our agent portal available, we're going to be able to see the different numbers and how many personal and how many commercial accounts that you do have. So please make sure that you are separating them. Any questions on the business and the individual accounts? It's a little different, but it's all the same information when you're entering it in. Just this real estate looks a little different. But I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna cancel that one because you guys have seen it. And I am gonna go into my Red Bud clients. Went in, entered in all this information that it was requiring. I can add relationships to an account. So let's say that we have Ginger Redbud and I just associated my own personal accounts. I have an Epic to show you guys what it looks like. So if you have a husband and wife and the child breaks off, then you can associate that relationship. So when you do pull up this account, you're like, oh, that's right. Laura Hamilton is associated and related to Ginger and Guy Redbud. You can add agency defined categories on here. So let's say that you are um, at a business expo and you wanna find out, was that worth it? Then all you need to do is go in and you can create and go through all of the agency defined categories. And we have a lot in here. And if there's a specific one that you want added in, just send training at asnoah.com and email and say, hey, can you please add in this agency defined category for me? And we can do that. And then we can run reports based off of these agency defined categories to see, oh, that's right. I just spent eight hours at this business expo and I got three people. Or I want to just pull all of them so I can market to them. Thanks for coming to the Business Expo. Here I am, I'll quote for you, whatever it is that you wanted to reach out to them. So that's agency defined categories, which it's not new, but it's something that is available. When you are servicing and adding in, so a lot of you have your own, um, you have your own default set up. So mine will be set up to put in customer service rep as Laura, and then we have the producer, Kathy. We can set these up for you differently with your defaults. Or if you're putting a policy in for somebody else, you can go ahead and um, change these at any time. So I can come in here and I can change it to one of our other agents. And then they would be able to see that in any reporting that might be available. Maggie just chatted in about putting in the source code. Thanks, Maggie, because I almost forgot that. Your account source code, where did you get this? And like when I was just talking about the agency defined categories, you can also use the account source for the same thing. And we can run a report with this account source. So some of our agents are using these, these account sources and they're pulling them on their reports so they can see, you know, if they got it from the mortgage company, if it was a referral, whatever it may be, there are so many in here. And like I said earlier about the agency defined categories, just let us know if there's one in here that you don't see. We can add it for you. Does that um, explain better, Maggie, for that, for the account sources? All right. Great, thanks, Maggie. Um, everything else then, billing is going to default for you. 
your client, your confidential client access. If you have some high profile um, celebrity within your agency and they don't want anybody in the agency to see any of their um, deck pages or attachments or their policies or any of their personal information, we can set up a confidential client access for them. We do have agents that have celebrities within their agencies who have told these celebrities, hey, we cannot block this off. Everybody on our team is helping you and providing you the best service and confidentiality. Um, so we don't have that many people that are using this, but it is available in case you do need it. Is anybody using account sources? Because it is really helpful to know where you're getting your business from. That is for sure. So account sources, agency defined categories, whichever you, know, you guys wanna use, just let us know because we'll need to add those in on the back end. So for contacts, I add in everybody in the household. So Maggie once told me, hey, get everybody in as your contacts so you can market to them later for whatever reason it may be. If it is teenagers that are just starting to drive and you want to offer them and sell them a AAA membership, or if you have um, people within the agency that are 65 and older, we can run a report based off of their age and you can market any kind of life insurance or medical supplements to them. So putting everybody that's in the household is going to be very helpful when you're looking to remarket or cross sell. I know, I know, Andrew, I wish we could too. We agree with that. Um, those are global areas over here for account sources and agency defined categories. So if you do, want any of them, we can add your branch code. So then all you would have to do is type in the first three letters and it would bring up all of yours. All right, so that's contacts. All right, so I'm gonna jump into policies. Well, wait, first let me click on the plus sign here. And it's the same when you're adding a contact in the browser as it is when you are using the install version of it. Maybe it's a little cleaner, but it's going to, you're going to put in all of the same information. All right, so I'm gonna click on policies and here's all the policies in my test accounts. And you can see all of those. There's a lot that are active because we're always going in and working and testing stuff. So if somebody sends us an email and says, Hey, I have an issue with one of my accounts and we go in there and we're looking at it. You may see any one of our names under here by the changed by or entered by on your own accounts. That's because we're looking at it, trying to answer your questions for you. There are times when we have to actually make that change for you so we can tell you how to go back in the next time that occurs for you to go in and know how to do it. So please note, you may see any one of our names. It's not that we are going in and servicing and making changes to everything that you have, but if we are working on an account, we will make a change for you if we see it. All right, so here we are. Now, if I wanted to see any of my older policies, the policies that are not effective anymore. So let's say, or one of your insurance says, hey, my policy just renewed, but I need to get an auto ID card. I have court, whatever it may be. All you have to do is go to All Accept Marketed, and it's going to show you every single policy you ever put it in, into Epic for this account. Just have to go to All Accept Marketed. For the agents that have policies that are on that past expiration report that you get every month, when you see policies on that report, that means they are not updated or renewed in the Epic system. So if you come in here to policies and you do the all accept marketed, you'll be able to find any of that those policies that maybe you need to manually renew or you need to request another download for that to get that policy active. Maybe it's canceled and you need to go in and you need to cancel this policy. 
So whatever it may be, all you have to do is change this drop down to take a look at them. So I'm gonna add a policy because I get a lot of questions of people asking me, what line of business should I be using? Excuse me. So it's a contracted policy. If it is an, an auto policy, it, it, you're gonna put it in as auto. If it's a motorcycle policy, you can put this in as auto. It downloads at auto. If you put it in as a cycle, it will still download and update that policy. If you put it in as an auto, you can change this description to motorcycle. That way, when you are going through the policies and you're looking at them, you will know which policy is their regular auto or it, if it is a motorcycle policy. And that's the same if you are putting in a home and they have multiple homes, you can change this description and you'll change this description and you can put in what the name of the property is. You put that right in there and then put in your policy numbers. Also, Jay-Z's got a question about the general liability. So there are two in here. There's a GLIA and the GL-S. We prefer that you use the GL-S because that's how the policy is gonna download from the carriers. If you put in the GIA, be consistent and have everybody using that same line of business. I would say just use this GL-S. If you have one agent or producer or customer service rep that's using GLIA and one's using GL-S, when you get your book of business report on the first of every month, you are going to see that there are going to be two different lines. It won't be a total for the general liability because it's two different lines of business. So be consistent. Did that answer your question, JC? All right, sort of. I'm really sorry. We can look into that as well. Um, we also have a question on adding packaged policies. So when you're entering in a packaged policy, if it is a personal lines, you can put it in as the uh, packaged PL, or there is one for a CPKG policy that you can put in. So if I'm gonna put in this package policy, and that's exactly what I'm gonna show you guys right now. And we're gonna put this, Encompass policy in because Encompass is one of the companies that issues the auto and the home as the same policy numbers. That's when it's a package policy. If any of the lines of business have the same policy number, it's going to be a package policy. I hope that is making sense to everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in the expiration date of this policy. It's an Encompass. And what I'm going to do is put in the total premium, hit my calculate button, it's gonna be zero. And I can check my use commission agreement box and it's new business. So using check this commission agreement box, you need to know what you issued. So I'm gonna choose new business. If you are writing with a wholesale company and you check this use commission agreement and it's blank, you need to uncheck it and then add in your the commission that that carrier is paying you. All right, so I'm gonna go back in here, add my new business, and I'm gonna click detail. Package policy, detail. Follow up on download activity, most important activity. You wanna make sure that your policies are downloading. It's gonna ensure that the policy number and the dates are correct and that you're not gonna have policies on the outstanding commissions report. If you're following up on your download, you know that those policy numbers are going to be accurate. So I'm going to leave it open. When that download comes through and it updates your policy, it's going to close that activity for you. It's going to close it. All right, so here's my lines of business. I have my package. Now I'm going to add in my auto. Got my auto policy, it's in compass. I'm going to use 
the commission agreement and I need to know what did I write. So I wrote a package premier auto policy, 17%, fantastic. And I'm gonna put my premium in, hit my calculate button, and I'm going to click add because I need to add in that second line of business, which is going to be my home. I'm gonna use my commission agreement. I am going to choose my package premiere. And I'm not sure if my numbers are going to line up. And then I'm going to go ahead and click, uh, whoa, that's a big commission. Let's take off a zero there. And it doesn't want to, all right, premium. There we go. I would really like that $20,000 commission. That would be awesome. I'm going to click finish. And when I look at my lines of business, I have my package, my auto, my home. Well, we know this is really not a line of business. It is just a holding place for my auto and my home. I'm going to delete this PCK1. I'm going to delete it. Come on, delete, delete. Am I sure? Yes. Oh, I have an open activity, so I need to close that activity. And I don't want to close it, but I'm going to have to reopen it afterwards to follow up on the download. Because that is the most important one. So I'm going to go back into my policies and I'm going to delete it. So now my package is just going to be my auto in my home. Is that making sense for everybody? Because package policies are more than one. You can add in here another. If you need to add in the umbrella, you can certainly come in here and add the umbrella or a boat or any policies that are all included into one, one policy number. The billing, it automatically pulls that information, servicing. If I need to make any changes here, I can. And my PRBR. If I am splitting commission, with anybody in the organization within your agency, you need to have both names listed. So you're going to have your producer listed, then you're gonna have the agency owner listed. This percentage split should equal the split that you have with ASNOA. If it doesn't, you can edit. I'm going to click on use commission agreements. And I'm going to click on my splits. So here we go. The production credit is 100% production to the producer. That only means that when you're running your reports, you're always going to see the producer's name, the agency owner's name, and you choose who's going to have all of the production, who's going to have all the premium and all the commission added just in the report. That doesn't mean that's how they're going to get paid. That's just showing you on your report, only one person is gonna have all of the lines of the premium and the commission. And then if I need to change or add anybody else, it is going to automatically pull. Now, when you are looking at setting up producer commission agreements, we have to do that on the back end. So don't come in here and change any of these percentages because when renewal time comes, it is not gonna renew with that same percentage that you have. It's gonna be completely off because the system doesn't have that on the back end to match up with whatever you automatically manually just put in. So we need to have that on the back end. So this percentage needs to equal the percentage split you have with this NOAA. If it doesn't, our accounting department is going to pay the agency owner on the producer commission report all of that percentage. Tell me if that makes sense, because it's really important for agents that are splitting commission. So if you have your profit center, and this is my test client, so I don't have profit center A, B, C, D. If you are a producer, you would put it in under your profit center. 
and then your PRBR would be listed with two with two names, your name as the producer and the agency owner's name. Very important. All right, Kate is, Kate, my screen doesn't have PRBR commission section. So Kate, you don't see this right here? All right, so from line, when you entered in all of your information, you are going to see the PRBR, the tab right here. And that's within the policy. So you have to have the policy. Just edit it. I'm going to X out and show you guys again. So I'm going to leave it in process because my download is going to update that policy for me. I don't need to manually issue the policy. The download will do that. If the carrier doesn't download, then you would manually issue it. But double check to make sure the policy number is correct and the dates are correct. So you want to make sure that you get that. So you do not ever need to update the stage to submit it. Any of our current existing agents before we had to go in and go to actions and update the stage to submit it, you no longer have to do that. Nope, don't do it. I beg of you, don't do it. Because if you're entering in a policy as a, you entered it as a, as a home and it downloads as a fire policy, all you need to do is delete that policy and re-enter it in with the correct line of business. If you update the stage to submit it, then you need to go in and not issue that policy. So don't update the stage to submit it. It's so much easier not to, and the download will come in and automatically update it for you. But if you did, and you put it in as a home, and it should be a fire, you would just need to go to issue, not issue policy, and you would put three asterisks after the policy number, not issue, and then change the status to not. It's that easy if that happens. But I'm gonna leave it as my new policy. When my download comes through, it'll update it to issued, changed by download. If it doesn't, you will see it on your report that you get called the Policies and Process Submitted Report. That report's gonna show you policies that have not downloaded into Epic. So you'll need to go into suspense, see if it is in, in suspense, and then assign it out. And I know everybody loves going into suspense, and we will get into that in just a minute. Proofs of insurance. In the LMS, we have a whole section on commercial lines and how to issue certificates of insurance. I have a weekly commercial lines course that you can go in, register for it, and I'll be happy to walk you guys through um, anything commercial. But in our LMS, we have a whole learning path on that. All right, transactions. If you click on transactions, it will show you what we received for commission. See this one that says accounting month? If it says January 2023, that means you will get paid on that in February. It's always the month following the month that's listed in transactions. So if you're ever wondering, did I get paid on this? I'm not sure if I got paid on that. You do not have to email us anymore and, and ask if you were paid on it. You can just go ahead, check in here to see if you were paid. But take a look at my search where. If you have the accounting month within range, January, I have 2009, but put it out to 2099. And then when you click find, it would show you a list. If you want this screen to always be here for you, there's this filter default. If you click it, you would check this use as default and then click OK. And then anytime you go out and come back in, it will save for you. Ta-da! So it's a great way to look to see if you were paid commission. So if you had any policies on the outstanding commissions, you send that off to outstanding.noaa.com. And now you're wondering, is I paid on that? 
I think I sent in that email. Just come in here and look and see if our accounting department reconciled commission for you. Does anybody have any questions on the transactions, on commissions, any of that? I don't really want to open up a can of worms on commissions, but we will pay commissions once the carrier sends the commissions to us, usually 55 to 90 days, and we never know when the carrier is going to send it. That would be, that's all on the carrier. So you can ask your carrier reps, you know, when is their cutoff? When is commission? All right, I got a question. Can you show me how to set the default date again? All right, so when you came into transactions, it probably um, had something completely different. So if you change the search where to the accounting month within range, put in your dates, click find, and then over here is this filter default. It's on the right, it's a blue hyperlink. You would use it, use as default, and you want the accounting month because that's what we just set up. And then you would click OK. And now it will save for you. All right. Any questions on that? Catherine? Taylor, is there any questions? I know I am not keeping up with all of them. Um, there's some coming in. Let's see. This, this transaction section is only for this account. It's only going to show you for this account. So if I go into a different account, I'm going to go into my own. All right. So if I go into my own account, it's going to show something different under transactions. And that's what it's going to look like. It's going to show you your policies and it's going to show you the dates. So I was paid on this in December. Does that make sense? Did that, James, did that answer your question? I'm just sure. Great. Now, if you are splitting commission uh, with any producers within your agency, our accounting department is going to pay the agency. You're going to get a report on the first of every month that's going to show you, hey, Laura Hamilton brought in $50,000 in premium based off the commission split with Laura. You owe Laura X amount of dollars. So as long as you have the policies entered in correctly and you have the commission split set up, you're going to be able to get that proper report with the accurate information for your producers for splitting commission. Um, I don't have a report that's going to show you the outstanding commissions that were already reconciled. You would need to come in here to transactions to look to see if commission was reconciled. All right, so I'm going to go back over to policies and see how I have two lines here, but my policy is still in process. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute, that is not a packaged policy. So then you can edit this policy and it's still going to be in as a package, but if I wanna remove a line of business and I click on line, all I have to do is go over here and delete it. I think that was one of the questions somebody asked. So all you have to do is go in and delete. As long as you don't have any open activities, as long as there's no commission that was reconciled on it, then you can go ahead and you can delete it. Anybody else have any other questions? Did I miss any questions? I don't think so. It doesn't look like it. Okay. Oh, wait, when under poly, uh, no. Remove a duplicate line. If when we have the agent portal, I think this was a question further in, maybe I'm reading it wrong, but once we have the agent portal and it is up and running, your guys are gonna be so amazed at this portal as soon as it's launched. Um, it's gonna show you 
policies that are on the Outstanding Commission's report. It's not going to show you policies if you have a shared code. Okay, if you're using a shared code, it's not going to show you that in the agent portal. It's still going to be an email from Anthony that gets emailed out to you. So make sure you guys are opening up both those links in that email about the outstanding commission. We want to pay you guys. We want you to get those policies entered into Epic. And when you're entering them in, I get a lot of agents that come back to me that say, my policy number is the same. Okay, did you email outstanding at as noah.com that you entered that policy in or was there supposed to be a space in here so if you know like nationwide when you put a nationwide auto in after that j there's a space so make sure you guys are adding in spaces when you're entering in an american modern policy you put a 071 in front of that when you're entering in travelers policies you put no dashes. Most of the time, any policy that has a dash, you're not going to put the dashes in as well. If you are ever curious of how you are going to enter in a policy of a carrier, maybe you're just now writing or you only write them once in a while and, and you can't remember, go into procedures and everybody should know how to get into suspense. And that's procedures, interface management, assign items and suspense. And then there's a run over here and you're going to run it. So you can go in and look. And I'm going to locate by the ICO. And I'm going to do begins with. And I'm going to do the travelers. And it's going to search it. And here. Um, these are all my travelers. Look, there's no dashes. So if you're ever wondering, just search for that carrier and it will let you know. All right. I think American Modern is A-M-E-R. Oh, this American Strategic. Um, so then you all you have to do is search it. Now, if you wanted to look in suspense for somebody else, you have to clear that filter. So you clear that filter, use the filters. I'm going to do account name. Let's see if there's any of my policies that are in suspense. And there's not. But it will show you any of the policies for Laura. All right. Are you guys good with, sus with suspense using the search where features? And then all you're going to do is highlight the one, click find down below. And when I look at this policy, it went into suspense because the dates are wrong. See how these dates here? And here's the renewal. I'm sorry, it's the renewal. So that's what exactly what we wanted to do. We want this renewal to find the previous term. And we're going to hit select existing. And we have two lines underneath there. So I'm going to have to take a look at this one. We have two lines. So this is a great, a great um, case study here to show, hey, when I see this, this agent would go back into this client's account and get rid of this policy that doesn't belong which is the mobile home, because it's an auto policy. So you need to make sure that your policies are cleaned up, make sure that they align with what is downloading, or it's going to come in here to suspense. Another thing that I suggest doing in suspense is going through and searching by your state. At least do this once a week. Every day, check your suspense. You're going to get a report, your policies that downloaded. That report's going to show you policies that automatically downloaded. So if there's a lookup code on there, they already downloaded and update the policy. But if there's no lookup code, that means it's still in suspense. So come in daily, check your suspense, get those policies out of here, and then also search 
by your state. So we have some policies here. So if I come in and I click on the branch code, because you want to find any of the ones that don't have a branch code. Because if you're searching by your branch, how you guys are already doing it, this is just another way to ensure that you're finding the ones that are downloading that are possibly a shared code, or maybe it's a new carrier that you're working with and they're downloading policies faster than we even knew that you had an appointment with them and we need to update on that on the back end so that the branch codes are here. So just scroll down, look for one of your clients, get those assigned. And as soon as you get to the ones that start with the branch codes, then you don't have to go any further. So you can stop right here because you wanna find the ones that don't have the branch codes. All right. Let me show you, if you have not been paying attention today, I want you to pay attention right now. All right, I am gonna go over here to download results. Download results under procedures, interface management. If you click on download results, here's where we're going to search for by name, by policy number, and we can recall it. It's a recall function. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring that policy that downloaded and it's going to bring it back into either suspense or it's gonna update your policy. So there are some things that you need to do here. All right, you're gonna change this session from all and you're gonna change it to policies you want to search all the policies and then what we can do is go over here and let me find a policy number all right i'm gonna hang on i'm gonna grab my policy number and i'm gonna search for it and let me grab it because it downloaded all right i'm gonna go over here and I'm going to search by policy number. You can search by all of these different search where from. So let me go to policy number. I'm going to do begins with. And I'm going to click paste. I put in my policy number and I'm going to click find. It's going to search Ivan's. So Ivan's is where all the carriers that download take that those policies and they bring them in. And it's not, well, my policy already downloaded. So it would find my policy if it didn't download. And then all I need to do is come over here to this recall. And it would go ahead and it would send it back into Epic from Ivan's. So a lot of you guys are always getting information and you're requesting downloads from different carriers. And you're, they're telling you, go to Ivan's, go to Ivan's. Here's where you're going to do that. So you're going to look for your policy. And let's just say it's this one right here. And then you can recall it. When you recall it and you scroll over, you're going to see this information, the recall date, the status. And then it's going to go right back either into suspense or it's going to update that policy. All right, is everybody good with that? Yes? Is everybody gonna use this? I certainly hope so, because this is gonna be a game changer for you. Kevin Berger, I know you love it, because I was on with Kevin yesterday and showed him this, and um, it's gonna be a game changer for you guys. Um, it is. It is new, it is new. Everybody has access to it now. We tested it, we know it works. And we love this feature. So when you need to go in and find a download, and I'm going to get out of here again, and I'm in procedures, download results, download results. And what this is for, Kate, is when a policy doesn't download. Maybe you didn't go in and find it um, in time before it was deleted. We only keep 30 days in. 
So this recall feature is where you're going to grab the downloads from the system that instead of going to carriers and requesting them. This is going to be great for people who have a shared code from Nationwide because you can't request a download. Come in here, make sure it says all policies, and you can go in and search where. You can search by claim number, by department, but you're going to see everybody's just like in suspense, everybody's policies. Okay. Then all you have to do is click this recall and it is going to take that policy and resend it. Has so everybody got it? Kate? Yep, she's got it. This is a game changer for you guys. Now, another thing that people are always asking, and it was on the Facebook page, what carriers download? Well, we have a handy dandy little spreadsheet that is all about downloads. Andrew, you ever have any questions, just reach out to us. We got the answers for you. So thank you for bringing that up because we want to show you guys we have that information. When we send you guys this spreadsheet, the first tab is going to show you what carriers download into Ivan's, which is where all the carriers download and store all their policies. So scroll through it. You're looking for um, a policy. Maybe you have Gaines Co. And all they download is the auto. Maybe that's the only line of business that they write, but that is it. So you can come through here and see if it's going to download. If you know that it's not a carrier that downloads, then go ahead and manually issue that policy. Some other information that is in this spreadsheet that we send you is different lines of business that we would like you to use. These are the most common ones and you can scroll through. Also, the different ICO codes. So if you're looking, hey, I just wrote a piece of business with Barton Mutual, here you go, that's the one you should use. Carol, we're gonna send you guys this, this cheat sheet. We do have it available for you. We also have this sheet in the LMS under our download learning path and that you can have it at any time. Save it to your system. The next one is where to go to request a, a download from a carrier. So here you go. If you need to request something from Aegis, that's the email address that you can request it. Our LMS is our learning management system, and that's where we have all of our videos, our how-tos, our documents, our quote sheets, we have that all available for you. And yes, Eric, we will get that out to you. Our LMS is absolutely amazing. It certainly is. And I will show you guys that. So here's the information. Now, remember, we don't, not every state quotes every line of business. So when you get this and you see that there is an, um, there's a carrier in here that's, that you write with that isn't in here, make it your own. Add that information in here or email us and we'll add it in so we have it for future reference. So we have all of this information. Uh, Progressive is really the only one that I know of um, right now that you can't request that by emailing them. You have to go directly into their website to, to request that download. Let me see if I have that here. Progressive. So right here, you go to the home page. Manage policy, policy download, request resets. So you are able to go in and request those downloads. All right, Andrew, did that help you? I certainly hope you guys are going to love this spreadsheet. Um, we update it every time Applied Systems sends us this update, which is old. So we're going to have a new one more than likely this month. So once we get that, we will send that out to you. All right. Any questions? Did I miss anything, guys? All right. We're coming up on our time, but I wanted to show you guys something here real quick, and that's attachments. So utilize attachments 
anytime your clients give you quote sheets and or deck pages or signed applications, all you need to do is open up wherever you have it saved and then just drag and drop it, okay? Just see where it's sitting right here? Just drag and drop it. And then when it opens up, you can attach it to the account. You can attach it to a policy. So if it is deck pages for this policy, I can attach it right to it. I can also change what the description is. So if it's a 2023, 2024, Safeco Auto signed app, I'm gonna add in the term, the carrier, the line of business and what it is. I can change this folder and if it is a signed app, I can put it in a signed app. If it was an e-signature, come on. I can put it in that it was an e-signature. If they're documents, emails, put everything that you are corresponding back with your clients, with the underwriters, drag and drop that right into attachments. And then go ahead and when you click finish, you're going to see it available for you right here in your attachment. So now we have all these attachments and we put them in folders. We can change it up at the top where it says attachments all into a folder view. So now I have different folders. You guys can set them up. We have 2021, two, three, we have the different folders here. And if I click on them, it is going to show me what I have in those folders. Jay-Z, mind blowing, I know it. And if you're going through it and you're putting in your quote sheets, let me find it, I, quotes. So you can go through and see your quotes quote sheets. Maybe you have quotes that you sent your client and you wanted to you save every single quote that you did with a carrier. Put it in here. If you have your emails, you can open up your emails and all you have to do is drag and drop them in. Same process. It's an email. Now, maybe this is a really important email. I can mark this as important because it is shared, you know, applied tech wisdom. And then I can put it in whatever folder I want to. Maybe it's just email correspondence back and forth. And now I can put it in. It's an email. Well, what kind of email in it? It's billing. And when I click finish, this is always going to stay at the top of my folders. So when I go back here, and I'm going to look at this all, it's always going to be at the top, no matter what, because it's marked as an important document. All right, any questions? I see there's a lot going back. Taylor, Catherine, anything? All right, I got two. A couple. All right. Anything regarding um, attachments? Is everybody good with attachments? Andrew um, was asking if there is a way to, sorry, I'm trying to get back to it. Um, if there was a way to have attachments go back to emails from Epic, like should he be able to drag and drop back to an email? He can't do that. You can, let me think of what the question is again. So you want to email from here. Like he wants to be able to drag, I, I'm guessing from what it says is that he wants to be able to drag and drop those attachments to an email. Oh, okay. And he's saying that he can't. So if I right click, I can send that via email. So I'm on an attachment in Epic, I can send it via email. It's going to then attach to an email right here. 
Ta-da! Is it not working for him? I know Andrew said that he couldn't drag and drop, but I'm that. Drag and drop, no. Drag and drop, no. Okay. All right. So here we are. Um, real quick activities. Use them, abuse them. Activities are so important to help protect your ENO insurance. They're, you know, CYA, cover your agency. Um, I can't stress over and over and over how important activities are. If your client calls you to just say, hey, you know, I paid my bill, document that. Or they are sending you the appraisal for, you know, for coverage that you are requesting. You can go in here, attach an activity to a policy, to the account, whatever it may be. Don't get hung up on all the different activity codes that are in here. There's a whole lot. The ones that I use all the time are remarket. If my client needs to be remarketed or I know that there is a claim that's falling off, I am going to re put remarket on it. I'm going to add a note. They are all date and time stamp and they cannot be removed. You can also add it to your calendar if you're using the installed desktop version of Outlook. So see the icon I have down here? It has to be that installed version and I can add it to my calendar. This is all date and time stamped and it will show up on your home screen under activities on the date that you tell it to. So if I, I tell it to do today, and I click finish, it's gonna show up on there. Now let's say this is an open activity. Now I wanna put in notes. If you look, it's all date and time stamped. I can click the plus sign and, and add more notes to it. I can't delete them, I can't remove them, nothing. If I spell it wrong, I can't even go back in and change that because they are date and time stamped. Um, another one that I use all the time is is a billing. Let me go back in and show you that. They're calling you, telling you they paid their bill. Billing. They're calling you and they're asking you, what is my bill for February? Document that. Everything that they do, document. Phone. If they call you up, you can use the phone one or there's a follow-up. Those are pretty much all of the ones that I use. Use whatever ones that make sense for you within your agency. Just try to be consistent that everybody's doing the same one. And then if there is there is an activity report that you can run every week that you have it that will show you what you have open for activities. You can also on the home screen, we have our different activities. And we can see them different ways. If I want to customize my view, if I want to see other people's activities, all I have to do is click on them. So Steve, Maggie, they're on vacation and I'm taking over for them. I can have my activity, their activities show on my home screen so nothing gets missed. So when they come back from vacation, they're not overloaded and stressed out because everybody's helping everybody within the agency. All right, anything, Maggie, I missed on activities or attachments that you want me to cover? Because I just kind of went through those pretty fast because we're right at the three o'clock mark. And I think we covered everything that I wanted to go over. If there's anything that you have questions on or that I missed, please let me know. Um, we also, Cecilia asked about um, commercial lines training. We have that, and I'll show you at isnoa.com. Laura, I think she's referring to SBCL. Oh, SBCL. We are putting the SBCL. Uh, Angel is working on that, and she is putting that on, um, on our LMS. So it is a work in progress, and we're hoping within the next couple of months we will have it completed and be able to roll it out to you guys. It'll be a recorded session and you'll be able for six weeks and you'll be able to take it on your own time rather than being dedicated and sitting there during a live session. So we're really excited to have that. We're going to roll that out to you soon. Here is information on our learning management system. Take a look at it. It is amazing. You guys are going to love 
love, love this. If you need to register for any of our weekly sessions, all you have to do is go to our Snowy University and scroll down. And we have Epic Weekly Servicing Help. Make a list of questions that you have and jump on a session. And we are, we are here. These sessions are dedicated. Jump on, ask your questions. You can jump off or hang around and we can go through all of your questions that you have. All right, any questions on anything Epic related? Yeah, there's this one from Levon um, about the download results portion. She's asking if it's possible if there are policies that are unaccounted for in there, basically meaning they haven't downloaded, they're also not in suspense. So I think the answer is yes, sometimes it'll not download properly for some reason. And so it's not in suspense and it never downloaded in. And then the recall feature might have it in there. Yep, absolutely. Great answer, Catherine. That is for sure. So if you have a policy and let's say um, you have the policy number wrong or when it came through, you, when it downloaded, you didn't have the policy in there. Um, so the download did come through, but for whatever reason, now it's over 30 days and we deleted it from sus the suspense area, you can still find it in here by using this recall. Hopefully that answered your question for sure. All she right. I had a question about um, the LMS. She didn't say what the question was, but if she wants to. Um, Kate's got a question about the LMS. Yeah, just says that she has a question about ASNOA 360 learning. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, Kate, um, give me one second. All right, guys. So, Kate, we'll talk. We'll talk. Um, I think also, you guys... Nick has his hand raised. I don't know if Nick, you want to yeah, you be unmuted to ask your question. I can unmute you. All Kate, right. I'll email you. I'll get you back in and then email you, Kate. Can All you right. put uh, Epic from the browser? Can I print from here? Can you print like print it to Epic like you can and then distribute it like uh, you can on the desktop version? What are you? I'm so sorry, Nick. Like if you're you? printing like a, a PDF form or, or uh, a, report? Like a web page. Oh, and so you're let's say you're in Safeco and you have deck pages and you save it to and you're talking about the Epic Document Writer? Yes. The Epic Document Writer is no is not available in the browser. What? But save it and then drag it over. Okay. I know, Nick. I know it's going to be very hard for people. Do we get a ref Do we get a refund from Epic? <laughs> no. This is so much more efficient. Save it, drag it in there. Using the Epic Doc your Document Writer actually has four more steps involved in using it than it does when you have a document. So if I have a document, this is just one I have open. So if I have this document and it pops up, I save it, and then all I have to do is pull up and drag it over. Okay, but so you just screen print, like if it's a if it's a web page or something like that. Yes, okay. and then save it, drag it. So you're gonna click once to save it. Type in whatever you want to save it as is two. Open up your documents is three. Dragging it over is four, and then typing in where you want it to go is five. When you use the Epic Document Writer, you have eight or nine steps. I can't remember how much it is. I still like it. Sorry. You know, I know. I know. That is one thing that when we've asked agents to go in and try it so and try to get used to it, that's what they come back with was the Epic Document Writer. But you're doing less steps by dragging and dropping it over. Just try it. Nick, please, can you do that? Okay. Yeah, I will. I will try it. Okay. All right. Um, when you're dragging and dropping over 
Let me go back over here. Let me pull this up. So if I'm dragging and dropping it, a document and I'm pulling it over, hold on, I'm on attachments. All right, so I'm gonna drop it in. And what was, somebody had a question. Drag and drop, it will disappear from your hard drive or from wherever you are dragging. So you can mark it as important. Dragging and dropping, I don't see the area where you can click it so it's not here or so it deletes it from your, from your documents. But it didn't delete the one that I had. So I had this one and I pulled over and it didn't delete it from here. So I'm gonna test that. Thank you for bringing that up. I will test that. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, I see one from Tony. I'll go ahead and allow you to unmute as well. Okay. I know we're after our time. So if anybody needs to go, thank you for joining today. I hope that you're going to use that download recall feature. Let me know what you think. Please let me know. If it's not working, it's working. If you're running into any issues, email training at isnoah.com so we can look into that. If you guys don't tell us if there's any issues, we don't know. And we're always looking to get that information back to support at appliedsystems.com so we can get you guys back the answers. So if something's not working right, let us know so we can research it for you. Okay. Um. Anyways, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, sure. What's your question? Yeah, with regards to the transactions, because I need to um, to be clear, um, because I need to check for something if uh, um, there is a certain month that we are paid for commission. Is that where we can see that in transaction? In transactions, if you look, can you still see my screen? Yes. If you look here and it mm -hmm. says whatever month, so I, I was paid in December of 2022 on this mm -hmm. policy. So it's the month following. Okay. You're going to get so, a report every month. A report comes out on the first of the month that mm -hmm. will show you policies that were reconciled and that are you will get paid on by the 15th. Our accounting department deposits commission into your accounts by the 15th of every month. Do we still to um, email the accounting for that? You, you do not. You only email outstanding at isnoah.com if policies are on the outstanding commissions report that you entered into Epic. Then you would email them. But no, once you put your policies in here into Epic, the commissions should come through. Okay. All right. As so, long as your policy numbers are correct, your policy numbers have to be correct. Okay. So again, um, we will, we can find that information with regards to the commissions if we are paid to transactions, correct? Correct. Okay. Yes. All okay. right. Thank you. You are very welcome. If that, that didn't answer your question, I can, we can reach out after this. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. All right. Does anybody have any other questions? Because I have time. I will I will stay on. Um, just to recap real quick, we talked about adding in those accounts and how important it is to have your different um, business, personal, you know, your personal and commercial and having those separated and how important those are adding your policies and using the correct line of business, making sure that your profit center, you entered that incorrectly, and the PRBR, if you have a producer, both names of the producer and the agent are in there. If you need additional help on accounts, policies, attachments, activities, please reach out to us. Join our weekly sessions and we will help you. If you have the LMS, go into the LMS and search 
any of that information. Here is the LMS. All you have to do is go in here and search, entering a policy, and you're going to get all this information. So, oh, I'm gonna enter it, here it is. All I have to do is go in here and it's gonna bring me right to this area of entering a policy. I can come down here and it will take me into that video. So all you have to do is go in here into the LMS and search for that. If you don't have the LMS, all you need to do is go into asnoah.com and then sign up for it. It's absolutely amazing. We are putting in new learning paths all the time. You can come in here and everyone's talking about commercial. We have one for commercial. We are putting the SBCL and the, and the PLCC into the um, LMS for you guys. Carrier trainings. This is awesome. All you have to do is log in here and it will take you into Progressive to take their carrier trainings. Grab any of their documents. It's all available right here through our LMS. Need more training on downloads? Here it is. Easy links. We got you covered. Vendor resources and our workshops and webinars. So we're always looking and putting in new information into our LMS. So you guys have all of this available to you. And this is our LMS. If you are interested, let me know. If you want another, um, for me to show you guys that again, I can do that. All you need to do is let me know because we got you covered. All right. I showed you guys the resources, the breakfast brew. I want to see everybody, everybody, everybody opening up the breakfast brew, looking for that secret word. And then on February's Live with Laura, we're going to put you guys in for a drawing for some secret swag and for our um, brew bucks. Get a coffee, breakfast brew, and you get some coffee. We're going to put you guys in a raffle for that. Please utilize the brew. It's going to give you guys so much information on what's upcoming. Let us know at the end. You're going to get the evaluation. Let us know what you want to see in upcoming Live with Laura's. Be specific. When someone puts in there, we want to see Epic or we want to see marketing. If there's a specific thing in Epic that you want to see, let me know. I need to get that feedback so I know how I can help you guys and give you guys that information. If you're looking for marketing, what kind of marketing are you looking for? Are you looking for a CRM or are you looking for marketing um, out of Epic or are you looking for Google reviews or working with social media? We want to help you guys with that. So give us some detailed feedback and I would greatly appreciate that. And remember, we are here. All of our departments here at ESNOA, we are available to help you. You're utilizing the Facebook page, which is awesome. Love it. Um, when you guys have questions, where to go to place a piece of business? What carrier is going to write, you know, a barbershop? You know, all of that, utilizing all the resources that we have are amazing. And anytime you guys have any questions, please just email training at asnoah.com and we're going to reach out. We'll find that answer for you or we'll direct you into the correct place. So thank you for joining. I cannot say enough how awesome you guys have been um, over the years with the Live with Laura's and attending and getting the information and giving me some great feedback. And then I wanna to continue to help you guys and get you all the feedback and anything that I know about Epic and Easy Links. I want to get that out to you guys. So thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys. And always remember.